Right, I've got one here now. Been to another garage. Changed some coils, some spark plugs, some fuel injectors, because it's got a misfire on one and two. Customer doesn't know whether the original ones have been fitted back, so I'm now gonna find out. And by the way, I'm in 4K now, so I hope this allowed some extra realism to my fantastic uh, video. Let's check it out. Right, so there you are. You can hear it misfire. Look on my face there. Right, let's get it in. Breather's working, isn't it? Right then, I've not read the fault codes yet, because I'm that good. Not really. But basically what I'm going to do is, apparently it's number one and two. Let's just have a look at the spark plugs to see what the hell's going on. <clears throat> apparently they've changed the coils. I mean, they're not cheap coils, these. They look like uh, Eldo. They look original to me then, in my opinion. The guy doesn't have to change the injectors, the spark plugs. The guy hasn't got a clue if they've even put the old ones back or not. So that's uh, as far as we know. So now the coils are out, <clears throat> let's uh, take a butchers at the plugs. If we've got fuel, Jesus, what a bunch of bloody idiots. So I can tell what sort of dickheads have been working on this. Another garage, because uh, plugs do not need to be that pissing tight. Fine, running lean, NGK. Now these are the old plugs. They're running lean, but they're not wet. But that don't mean anything, we might not even have any fuel at all going into the bloody engine. For example, transistors, I think transistors on DMEs and things like that. But it seemed like it was a misfire, it wouldn't run on uh, only one cylinder this engine. It's a three cylinder engine, so it's it's probably alternated between cylinders one and two, the misfire. What we need to do, we need to see if there's any fuel being injected in, but the issue with that is I don't have a side cam anymore because we're still waiting for this bloody ridiculous camera. Well, the dry, either the dry because there's no problem or the dry because it's not fueling. But I find it very hard to believe anything would run on one cylinder. Don't you lot? I don't think one of these would ever run on one cylinder. So what I'm going to do now is, no paint marks at all on there. Let's just show you what I mean. So when you're doing these injectors on this particular engine, it's very important you angle tighten the rail bolts and the injector bolts. The reason for that is to stop it leaking. Now, I can't really see any leaks, or can I? Not really, because it would be swimming in fuel. My question is, and it worries me a great deal, is has it been done right? Probably not. So now I'm gonna get a bore cam, I'm gonna stick it down there and I'm gonna see what I can see. Let's check it out. So, well, there's plenty of fuel in that engine. Let's do the other one. Okay. Just crank that over, will you? Okay, that's good. There's a lot of fuel there, so we've no issue with fueling, have we? It might be a bit much, but I don't think so because we've not got black plugs. Right, what an enigma. This is the sort of stuff I get regular. So we've got good fuel. We've not got black plugs. But actually, leanish looking plugs, so we, we shouldn't be over fueling in that sense. We've got a spark. So we're going to use the motor meter just to check the compression. The issue is, I don't have. I know you lot like to see all the scoping and stuff like that, but. There's an issue, you see. Now, I did try some time ago to get some stuff from Ukraine uh, to check things like this digitally, and I haven't had any luck, and it's complicated. But anyway, let's do the compression check and see what happens. Right, go for it. Whoa, fantastic. Stop. Well, I'm boxing this back up because there's no wrong with cylinder one and two. Nothing at all that I can see. So it's on to number three and let's see what that produces. So I'm glad I did all that, but now I'm gonna to have to pull the panel off and, and uh, look at number three. 
So clearly the issue actually is number three, not number one and number two. So I'm not blaming them. Sometimes we all get confused, don't we? So the good news is I've just spent time checking number one and two and I know everything's okay. And it took me like two minutes. I've been on the job half an hour. So now we'll just look at number three and we'll do exactly the same as what we've just done on number three. And uh, we should then find the culprit. You know, it should be dead easy this and I think it will be. So let's do that. Well, you can clearly see there that we've got a trail on the head from the injector, a stream, like a staining, if you like. And you can see it bubbling there. You can just see it bubbling on the injector nozzle. So, yeah, we found the fault. It's got a leaking injector, and I dare say when it runs, it leaks even worse than it does in a static position like this. So there you are, diagnose in 40 minutes. Less than an hour, it's time to, you know, stripping and building up. And that's all you need to know. So no oscilloscope, no fancy stuff other than maybe a bore cam and compression tester. Um, if you had a scope, you could pick that up, of course. If you had like a pulse system in the intake or a pulse system in the exhaust, you might pick it up because the cylinder balance isn't the same, is it? Because it's, you know, it's not really combusting the switches the injector off. So it's kind of probably combusting, but not so good unless it switches the spark off as well i'm not sure anyway that's enough for that video it just needs an injector we've actually physically seen the issue we know it's a common problem with high, uh, high pressure direct injectors so no follow-up video we'll throw an injector in but we might not you see because it, it was all done at another place or so maybe i'll go back and get some sort of warranty i hope you learned something from that use your head you don't need to use a scope see you soon